she could possibly go from at five years old dreaming of being on the moon to quite literally being on the moon. Hi, I'm Sarah Forster, news editor here at The National, and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of A Closer Look. Now, this week we are looking at the UAE's ever developing space program. There has been yet another milestone, and for that, I have brought in our space editor, Sarwat Nazir. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarwat. Thank you for having me, Sarah. So, it was a fairly momentous day yesterday. 12 new graduates from NASA's, I'm just going to call it Space School. I'm sure it's got a much fancier title than that. Two of those graduates, particularly important to us. Tell me a bit about them. Right. Yeah, so 12 of those candidates included two Emiratis, um, Noor al Matrushi, who is the first Emirati woman um, to be selected as an astronaut, and Mohammed al Mullah. Um, they walked the stage yesterday at the graduation ceremony with 10 of their American colleagues, where they received a uh, silver astronaut pin, which basically symbolizes that they are ready for space flight. Mm -hmm. Now, they completed two years of training um, at the Johnson Space Center in Houston and different parts of the U.S. Mm -hmm. where they did spacewalk training, uh, survival training, and uh, learning the systems of the ISS, that which is the International Space Station, and the Russian language. And that sort of basically prepares them, you know, for future missions to the International Space Station, but they're also eligible for missions to uh, beyond the ISS, for example, future flights to the Lunar Gateway or to the Moon or Mars. Mm -hmm. um, so now they join uh, UAE astronauts Hazal Mansouri and Sultan Al Nayari, who've already been to space. It's a very select group, isn't it? It's a very small club of people, um, but quite a quite an esteemed one. Now. Um, so we've got two new Emirati astronauts. You spoke to them last night. Yes. What did they have to say? So uh, obviously they were quite uh, excited right after their ceremony. Um, they had their friends and family and a lot of their colleagues there who attended the graduation. They felt like they were very supported. Mm. Um, Noura al Matrushi in particular was talking about how a lot of her colleagues um, came to support Harry Flu across the world to attend that ceremony. And um, she was talking about being excited of being able to come back to the UAE and visit her grandmother, for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, tell her all about her experiences because she said her grandmother asks a lot of questions about her training. <laughs> and uh, what was interesting is she said that, you know, she has been inspired by her grandmother and her mother, who, who she said are huge feminists mm -hmm. um, and want to push, um, you know, the, the daughters and their family to pursue higher education and uh, go for, you know, these different kind of fields. Well, she delivered, didn't she? She, she delivered, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> she did not let anyone down. Yeah. Um, that's wonderful. And she's actually, she's got a nice story, doesn't she, about why she wanted to become an astronaut in the first place and how this might actually come full circle? Definitely, yes. So she has spoken about um, dreaming of becoming an astronaut, you know, when she was five years old, when her kindergarten teacher um, asked her, asked the students to imagine, you know, a, a space mission mm -hmm. or different kind of activities that they would hope to do when they grow up. And she, um, you know, imagined going to the moon. Um, now, why this is a full circle is because the UAE has signed um, a deal with NASA to develop um, an airlock for the Lunar Gateway, which is basically a door um, that is used to enter and exit a space station. Now, this station would be in the orbit of the moon. Mm -hmm. um, and in exchange for that, um, the UAE gets to send one astronaut uh, to the gateway. Mm -hmm. um, a separate deal would have to be signed for um, an astronaut to go to the surface of the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless, it's, a, it's an incredible feat and accomplishment that the UAE is, uh, has managed to secure a deal as such. Any of the four astronauts are eligible to go on that flight. Uh, mm -hmm. It just depends on who gets selected, and I think that would probably be um, a process much later on. But Noor al Matrushi could possibly be one of those candidates. She could possibly go from at five years old dreaming of being on the moon to quite literally being on the moon. Yes, and I think that is kind of the future of, um, of many of the UAE astronauts, because uh, as the ISS is nearing retirement, mm. um, they're going to be probably be training for a lot of different kind of missions, for example, to commercial space stations. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if they're, for example, going on government uh, missions led by NASA and the UAE, then it's most likely going to be to the moon and beyond. Mm. And this isn't the only um, 
feather in the UAE's space cap, if you want to put it that way, because there are other missions, there are other programs going on at the moment. Um, can you give us a little just roundup of those? Right. So this year, there are still a lot of exciting uh, things to come for UAE space. Um, mm -hmm. MBZ Sats, for example, named after the UAE president, um, Sheikh Mohammed. It's going to be launched later this year on a SpaceX rocket. It's mm -hmm. uh, being called the most powerful imaging satellite in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, and it's about 100 times more powerful than Khalifa Sat, which was launched in uh, 2018 and was the first uh, domestically built uh, satellite in mm -hmm. the UAE. Uh, the asteroid belt mission is coming up as well. Yes. Um, uh, it has a launch date of 2028, which is only four years away now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it's getting it's closer. Creeping up. Yeah, yeah, it's getting closer. Um, and they continue, they're going to start developing that mission uh, probably this year, mm -hmm. now that they have um, the final review locked down and everything is in order, the budget, the technicalities. Um, so they're going to start developing that mission. And another thing is the UE astronauts, for example, they're going to be doing a rotational um, thing where they're going between uh, Houston and Dubai, mm -hmm. working in mission control. Oh. So if you're wondering why, what they're going to be doing, if, why they're not going on a space mission right away, it's because mm -hmm. they're also working in mission control. Um, they're doing outreach activities like uh, talking in schools and um, talking about their experiences. Which is all very important to encourage the next generation of kids yes. to imagine what it's like to be on right. the moon. Yeah. Right? And that's basically what an astronaut's career is mostly about, not just working in mission control and other technical things. And apart from going from space, it's mm. uh, taking care of the next generation. Education. And, yep. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. It's always such a pleasure to have you on, Sarah, because you know more about this stuff than anyone I've ever met. So it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this week's episode of A Closer Look, brought to you from right here inside the Nationals newsroom. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can find all of our previous episodes on our YouTube channel.